Hi there. So today I'm going to be showing you how to enter data in the statistics menu of the CG50, though I would like to also remind you that if you have the 9750 or the 9860 graphing calculators, the process is the same. You go to the same menu, you do the same steps, which is the beauty of Casio calculators is you only have to know what once and it works for all the calculators. We're very consistent that way. The difference being obviously that the CG50 has a color screen and color output and larger um, window viewing, but the process is the same. So we're going to be entering data and then we're going to do scatter plots and some linear regression. So what I want to show you is that I'm using this data from an activity that is free in the Casio Education site. I will provide the link in the description. Uh, this is an activity called life expectancy. It's comparing the uh, projected life expectancy for different countries. So you'll notice um, it lists the countries and then we have our overall life expectancy and then it's broken down by male and female. So what we're going to do is enter the data and then do some comparison using um, scatter plots to see if there is a connection. You know, if there's some correlation between male and female or overall and male, what, how can we use that information? So I did do some uh, of the same graphical entry with the 9750 where I was showing histogram and bar graph. So you're going to see some of the same things. Uh, basically, the steps I'm going through allow you to get to any type of statistical plot you want to get to. So I'll talk about that when we get there. So the first thing we want to do is look at our menu and we want to go to the statistics menu. So I can either type 2 here on this calculator or just arrow over to where statistics is, hit execute, and now I'm ready to type my list. And I have three lists, so I could just say list one, list two, list three. I could also put in a subtitle, so it's pretty easy to do that, and this is helpful if you're working with students. I'm going to arrow up, and so now I'm in that blank space, and if I want to use letters, I need the alpha, and I want to lock it. So let's say our first column is going to be this overall, so I'm just going to use the word over. So I've locked the cap lock and now I'm just typing in the red letters that are above the numbers. And once I'm done, I hit execute and now I have a subtitle. Instead of list one, it's also the overall. Now let's do mail. So same thing, I arrow over here. I'm going to turn on the calculator, not the calculator, the caps lock. And let's enter the word mail. Okay, and then execute, and one more time we're going to do the same for the female. So all I've done is add a subtitle, but that's kind of nice, especially if you're really focusing on students, you know, labeling their work and really being clear about what everything represents. So, all right, the next step, so I've entered this, is we want to enter the data. Entering data, very easy. You're just going to basically do a column at a time or a list at a time. So I'm gonna I'm over here on the first entry for list one or the overall expectancy. So all I have to do is type in the number I see. So 82.6. If you have actual calculators, you're gonna enter that using the number screen. And then once you're done, you hit execute, puts it into that position, automatically goes down. Now you enter your second number. And then and I'm going to go through this very fast so you don't have to actually watch me do every entry. We'll speed through, but I just to talk about once you get to the end of a list and you're ready to go to your next list, if you arrow over, it brings you to the top or the next possible entry. And now we would simply enter our numbers for the second column. So I'm going to pause really quickly now and finish completing this list, these three lists. We're going to speed through it very fast. I'm using the emulator, so I'm actually using the keyboard instead of the calculator numbers because it goes a lot faster. So bear with me for a few seconds while I quickly enter the data. Okay, I finished and a good, especially if you have a lot of numbers you're adding, it's nice to kind of scroll up real quick, make sure you didn't make any errors, you know, forget your decimal and have a very large number, as that will impact, see, right there. I'm gonna make that be 78.5 and we'll keep going. Just making sure that I didn't have some more typing errors. 
because I was going very fast. All right, so we're done with our data and now we're ready to maybe look at it. So this is data, we wanna look if there's comparisons, we can look at different types of graphs. So down here, there's a lot of things you could do. You could do calculations, you could do tests, so you know, Z test, Chi test, all those types of things, but we're gonna go to graph. So as in any um, Casio calculator, whatever you see here is matched to the function key below it. So I want graph, I'm gonna hit function one. Notice I have three possible graphs. I happen to have three lists, so technically I could make a different type of data plot for each graph or the same one and see all three of them together. So how would I change the graphs? If I go to set, I can, so notice we're on graph one right now, I can choose from a wide variety when I um, arrow down my graph type, scatters the default, but I could do an XY line, a, MP plot pi, and then this right here indicates that there's more, the arrow, so F6, histogram, box, bar, broken, and there's a whole bunch of different ones. So there's lots of different things I can do with that data. We're going to do scatter plot right now because we're trying to see if there's a correlation between, say, overall and male, if there's a correlation between male and female, what's that connection. So let's actually compare male to female. Can we, can we determine a female's life expectancy based on male life expectancy in each country? So let's go back to the list. So one thing, if you wanna get back to your beginning, always hit exit on a Casio and it brings you back. So let's just remember that the males are in list two. We would like that to be our input. And we're trying to determine if there's a, a way to figure out is a relationship between male and female. So that's gonna be our output. So we want list two for X and list three for Y. So let's go back to setup, graph one. We want, and I'm gonna scroll down to my X. What list did we say we wanted for our input? Well, we wanted male, so that needs to be list two. So to change a list in the setup, notice this word right here, list, correlates to function one. So I'm gonna hit function one, and now I simply enter the number that I do want. So we want two, the list that had the males in it. And then for my Y, my output, I wanted the female list, which was list three. So again, I'm gonna arrow down to that. I'm gonna hit list and I'm gonna type in three this time. So I basically set up the graph that I want. So now we're gonna hit exit to get back. And now I want to actually graph it. So graph one, but I wanna make sure I've turned the graphs on. So, cause you can turn graphs on or off here. So let's hit select first. So you'll notice default turns graph one on and the other two are off. So this is what we want. But if I didn't want graph one on, notice how easy it is to turn them on and off. I simply hit um, F2 to turn it off, F1 to turn it on. But we're happy with this. We only wanna see what we just set up, the males compared to the females. Let's see if there's a relationship. So I'm gonna now hit F6. And it does seem like there's a correlation, right? Which means whatever the male's age is in a country, the female is somehow connected to it in some way. So I could probably do a regression. And this looks like a line, so I would wanna do a linear regression. So this is where, while I'm in the graph, I'm gonna to go to this calculate function. So when I hit this, notice I have different things that I can calculate. Median line, x squared, x3. What, what makes sense here? Well, this looks linear, so a regression makes sense, which corresponds here to F2. So we're gonna hit F2, and notice you can choose the form that you want, um, AX plus B, or the reverse of that, A plus BX, up to you. Um, I'm gonna use this one. Uh, slope intercept is basically, this is a pretty common. So let's choose F1. So remember, anything above here corresponds to the function button below it, so F1. And you'll notice now that I have this linear regression. So if I'm asking students to write out the equation, they could use this to help them in this form right here. And now um, I am gonna hit draw and it's gonna put a line of fit between them. So looks pretty good. What does it actually mean? So let's go back to our calculate here. And it means, so it's about one and it's in this form, one X. So we're gonna say about one, a little bit more and a negative one. So if I know the man, a male's input, I can uh, multiply that by one and subtract a year and I'll get the female's age. I can't see right. Isn't that the best line of fit? Well, you could go back and 
let's hit exit again, we could, oops, let's actually graph, hit our graph again. We could do a different calculation. Let's do a median line. And here it's slightly different, right? This is saying that no, you, it's about one, but then you're gonna add 11 instead of subtracting. That's it. So which one's a better fit? So these are great um, explorations to do with students. So let's hit exit, go back. Let's select a different graph. So let's turn off graph one and hit exit and let's set a different graph up. So let's set up graph two and this time let's compare. Um, we're still gonna do scatter plot, but this one, this one has list one, which is our overall expectancy and the male. Can we determine the males based on the overall? And so those are our two lists. So we're good. We don't need to change anything. So we're gonna hit exit, and then we're going to make sure that graph two is on now. So I'm gonna arrow down, turn it on, and draw it. And again, there does seem to be a relationship. So let's do our two different, let's do our linear regression. And it looks like it's about one and add two years to get the mass to the average life expectancy. Interesting. Or let's go back and hit our graph two again and calculate what's the median line. So now we could really explore this one as subtracting four years from that. So depending on what line you feel is the best fit for that set of data, you can have some great discussions with your students, which one seems to be the most appropriate, which one gets our, our ages that are in the table, that type of thing. So this is just a way to um, enter data, make some different plots. We focused on scatter plot, but you saw that there were many different plots that you can use different ways to set up the graphs. So have fun exploring.